All right, everybody, what is up? And today I'm bringing you guys a gameplay on the map Hydro using the Peacekeeper with Suppressor. Uh, so, you guys are probably going to want to know what my thoughts and opinions are on the map pack DLC and the Peacekeeper itself. And surprisingly, for Call of Duty DLC, um, you know, I didn't really like the MW3 DLC to, like that much. Black Ops had good DLC, Mono for 2 had good DLC. And I have to say that this DLC is pretty good too. Um, this is definitely one of the better DLC drops. I like all the maps. There's not a single map that I dislike out of this DLC drop. As well as, um, <clears throat> I uh, really enjoy the Peacekeeper. I think that it's uh, an interesting gun just because I feel like it connection really does uh, put like a big impact on it. But uh, it definitely is one of the better guns in my personal opinion uh, for, uh, for at least for my personal, uh, I guess you could say, use. Just because it is a hybrid uh, weapon, and I do mostly use SMGs in this game just because I think that they are the best in this game, um, but because of its hybrid, it lets me play a little more of a defensive role with the SMGs, is which I I like more, I guess you could say per se, than uh, the in-your-face SMG game style, because I do do that sometimes, but I prefer the more defensive, uh, you know, kind of uh, SMG style, which sometimes it's hard to... Uh, I guess you could say complete, but the Peacekeeper, because it's hybrid, it gives it those assault rifle attributes where it kind of feels like it's just an assault rifle with uh, some SMD attributes and a stock, like a built-in stock. So overall, I would have to say it's a good gun, definitely not the best gun, definitely not overpowered, and I really like the weapon DLC. I really do hope they bring up more weapon DLCs. I do not have a problem with that whatsoever. And um, I'm just really glad to see that, um, you know, they actually impl implemented um, a weapon DLC. I never thought it was going to happen in Call of Duty, but they did. And definitely a really uh, d good thing, at least by uh, my standards, yeah. And uh, actually, uh, this game plays, I think, day one when this game was at. Yeah, it was day one. I do have the uh, Peacekeeper Gold now, so I have used it quite a bit. I do have it as, like, my second favorite weapon now on the Xbox 360, so I have been using it uh, a lot more than... Um, you know, most people, so I do have a good grasp on it, and, uh, yeah. So, uh, the maps, let's get into the DLC maps. Like I said, I really do like them. I do think that they're all unique in their own ways. Hydro, for an example, the one I'm playing on right now, it does have the interactive feature of the water that, um, it's kind of annoying, but I don't dislike it, just because it really does um, take off some flanking routes and the only thing that I don't like about it is that if it's a really competitive game and it's taking my opportunities away of getting B which it does do um, it kind of I don't know I, th I can see that being annoying luckily I have not had the problem with that yet because I've not ran into a competitive game on the DLC maps really that well I had one but at least not on this map it's the only thing I don't really like about it but at the same time I do like it um, <clears throat> I think it's cool but there's a reason why I don't think this map is a very good map when it comes to competitive gaming, for sure. Uh, Hydro, like I said, very good. The other map is Grind. Grind is a really fun map. Um, definitely in your face and, you know, go, 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 at least by how I play it or attempt to play it. Um, I really think the color scheme on Grind is actually really cool. It kind of reminds me of Stadium for some reason. I'm not sure why that is. But um, it is a really cool map. I do like Grind. And the only thing that I think is kind of silly about it is that half the head glitches aren't really head glitches on the map. Like, there's different skateboard jumps everywhere and all these different things that head glitch. But they're not even that good of head glitches, which I kind of wish Treyarch would bring back, um, like, the way head glitching was. Just because some people called it cheap, but it's definitely part of the game and you should never take that out because it kind of takes it away and it doesn't really feel like Call of Duty in a way. That's just my personal opinion. Um, not, it kind of, it is kind of a benefit to camping, but it kind of helps you put uh, power spots up and kind of, I guess you could say, control the map a little bit or in ways. So that's why I like head glitches and I kind of wish they'd bring them more back, but um, I do like what they did with Grind for sure. The other map, uh, I can never... Uh, I can never remember the name for it. It's the, the sand one where it's like in China or whatever. That map is good. Um, it's got like the triangle effect for Call of Duty where it's like the domination plays in a triangle effect itself where um, you're not playing it from you know a straight line of the dom flags. It is legitimately like a triangle formation of the domination uh, playlist itself. 
Um, it is a good map, but the spawns aren't very great on it, and uh, I, I don't know. Just uh, it's not. It's my least favorite out of all of them, but I don't think it's a bad map either. So. Um, even a map that, like I said, is my least favorite, I still like the map itself. I like it a lot better than some of the maps are in the game right now. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, you know, who knows, that could change, but as of right now, that is my least favorite one. And then the, uh, last map is Downhill, the snow map, which I really, really do enjoy. I love how it, I don't know, for me, it kind of feels like a mix between, like, a really big summit and, like, Discovery, kind of. And I really like Discovery, I kind of like... It feels like an old Treyarch map, like an original Black Ops 1 Treyarch map. Like the people who made all the maps in that game made the same maps in this game, but they're in 2025. That's what I really like about that map. If, you know, I can play defensive on it, I can play how I want, and there's even like the in-your-face submachine gun play that, you know, goes in that map. It has like, it's pretty much suited for everyone is what I'm trying to say. Um, you can have the SMG play style on that map, you can have the defensive sniper, you know, the, uh, I guess you could say flanking assault rifle guy. You can have everything works on that map, which is why I really like it. Plus, it's great for domination. I really like uh, the domination on that map. And it just overall feels like an original Black Ops 1 map, is which I really like just because I love those maps so much. They're my favorite maps out of any Call of Duty. And I just like the way that Treyarch uh, put, used to put maps together, at least in the original Black Ops. And it felt like that. So it kind of recaptured uh, what I used to love about the original Black Ops, and they put it in this game. So um, that's why I... I'm not sure which one is my favorite map. I'm not sure if it's... I think it's, it's going to be downhill, I would assume so. Um, but if any of you guys are controversial or, like, um, skeptical, I guess you could say, of buying the DLC, if, you know, you're thinking about it, but it's like, eh, the DLC hasn't been that great in the past. I don't know if I want to waste my money on it. I would personally just buy the DLC. Um, I'm not saying you have to get the Seasons Pass because you obviously don't have to, but... If the deal, if the very first DLC drop was this good, I would almost say that if you don't have a season pass, get it. I just hope that uh, you know some people don't buy the seasons pass just because the first DLC was so good and the rest of the DLC isn't bad. But I do have a faith in Treyarch, so overall, guys, I would have to give this uh, DLC a thumbs up. Anyways, let me know what you guys thought about it. Thanks. Peace.